Let's talk about some of the concepts behind multi-agents. Because so far, we were able to put together a multi-agent system ourselves, but we want to make sure to understand what makes them great. So what does make an agent great? Well, there is at least six elements that make an agent a great agent. The first one is role playing. The second one is focus. The third one is tools. The fourth one is cooperation. The fifth one is guardrails. And the sixth one is memory. A lot of that is what makes good employees as well. You're probably good at your job because you're able to focus, because you're able to use the right tools, because you're able to cooperate with others, because there are certain dark rails and you should have good memory. So let's dig into each one of those and talk about how this comes together to help this agent to be better. So let's start with role playing. So the first thing is role playing. Role playing can make a huge difference on the responses that you're going to get from your agents. The ability for them to kind of like just take the shape or form or a function for something else will have a direct impact on what kind of answers you're going to get and kind of like what you're going for. So here's a quick example on how that plays a role even on a chat setting, but it plays an even bigger role once that you're doing on an actually agentic system where there's way more messages going on. But in here, I just asked ChatGPT to give me an analysis on the Tesla stock. And then I asked the same ChatGPT to do the analysis on the Tesla stock, but now I just set some context for each to role play into, saying that you are a FINRA-approved financial analyst. So let's see the difference between those two answers. The first answer you can see that basically mentions about many factors. It kind of talks about financial performance. But the second one, you can see that is already digging straight into it, talking about NASDAQ, talking about like the actual Tesla stock and talking about EV manufacturing market. And you can see throughout the response that I'm going to spare you from seeing here, how that played a role on the response overall. So this is just a tiny example, I'm not saying that it's better or worse, but the role, the context that you set for your agent does have an impact on how it's going to respond. So my call out here is to be mindful as you're creating these agents to make sure that you're setting the appropriate roles, the appropriate goals and the appropriate backstories, because that will play a role in the kind of results that you're going to get. But let me step back for a second, because I want to call out one thing. Realize how we use FINRA in our context setting. We could have just said that this chat is an actually financial analyst, and that's it. But by choosing the finger keyword, we're helping direct the LLM to give a certain type of answer. So in here, you can see how being careful and mindful about how you choose the role, the goal, and the backstory, and the keywords that go into that allows you to get better results out of them. We actually have customers and users using Crew AI worldwide. They're applying similar concepts to get better results out of their multiple agent systems. So I would be mindful about when you're setting the roles and the goals and the backstory to make sure to use keywords that will actually help you and will get you better results. All right. So we talk about role playing. Let's talk about focus. Focus is another big thing. And I'm not talking only about context windows. We know nowadays that LLMs have longer and longer context windows, and you can leverage that in order to produce amazing content and to also import a lot of content. But the one thing that becomes clear throughout many researches is that if you mix things up too much, it doesn't matter if you're talking about too many tools or if you're talking about too much information or too much context, your models can lose important information and also open up opportunities for more hallucination. So another thing that makes agents great is their ability to be focused. And when I say that, I mean focused on the amount of the tools that they get, focus on the amount of content that they get sent, and also focus on what they're actually trying to achieve. You shouldn't rely on one agent to do it all, but instead, many agents that work better together. We have seen this in the industry. People that are using CreAI out there have way better results when they are using multiple agents compared to when you're using one single agent throughout many different verticals. 
So, all right, we know that agents work better when they're role-playing and when they're focused. So, what about tools? That's another common thing. People tend to try to give a lot of tools for their agents, and that can get confusing. You can overload your agents with too many tools, so they're going to have a hard time to choose a tool. They might end up not using a tool that they should, and you might end up having even bigger problems if you're using smaller models, because then they're going to get even more messy, not being able to distinguish what is the tool, what is the context, what they're trying to achieve. Because these smaller models are also less capable in general. So another rule of thumb that we tell for everyone that is using Query AI out there is to choose the tools that you're going to give your agents. You want to make sure that you're providing them with the key tools to do the job that they need. The same way that you would do if you're hiring someone or if you're getting someone new on your team. All right. So we already know that agents now are great at role-playing, focus, and using tools. Let's talk about cooperation, because that also is another thing that make a huge difference for agents. Ability to cooperate and to bounce ideas off each other makes a huge difference on producing better outcomes. The same way that when you're talking with ChatGPT, the process of having a conversation and giving it feedback helps it to produce better outcome, the ability for these agents, they're now role-playing to talk to each other and simulate that same chat behavior creates a better result. They can basically take feedback from each other, they can delegate tasks to each other, and by doing that, produce a better outcome. So it doesn't matter if you're using Crew AI or any other framework out there, you wanna make sure that your agents are set up to being able to collaborate with each other. The next one is guardrails, and guardrails is so important because remember that we are now talking about AI applications. And we have talked about this in the past. AI applications imply on fuzzy inputs, fuzzy transformations, and fuzzy outputs. That means that you don't necessarily will get strong typed results. But that's okay because that's part of the application. That doesn't mean that you want hallucination though, or that you want your agents to get stuck on random loops or using the same tools repeatedly or taking too long to give an answer. That was actually a problem that we had early on, on the first versions of Crew AI, where agents would be stuck trying to use the same tool over and over again, especially if they're using open source small models. But we fixed that. Throughout many iterations, we implemented a series of guardrails that prevents your agents from derailing and nudge our agents to stay on track. And most of those are implemented on the framework level. So make sure to check whatever framework you're using. I can tell that Create AI has a bunch of them, but it's also something that you want to consider when building custom tools, as we are going to discuss later in this course. But these guardrails are going to make sure to prevent hallucinations and to also make sure that you get a reliable and consistent results throughout your multi-agent systems. All right. Now there's just one last thing to talk about, memory. Memory can make a huge, immense difference on your agents. If anything, it can make more difference than all the other things combined. Memory is the ability for your agent to remember what it has done. And not only that, but to use that to inform new decisions and new executions. The ability to recollect what they did in the past learn from it, and apply that knowledge into future execution. Some framework will offer different types of memory and different types of implementations for it. In the case of Crew AI, because we are using this, our agents will get three types of memory for free out of the box. Long-term memory, short-term memory, and entity memory. Short-term memory is a memory that lives only during the crew execution. Every time that you run a crew and you kick it off, it starts from the blank. This memory is useful because as different agents try to accomplish different tasks, they store different things that they learn in this memory. And this memory is shared across all the agents, meaning that an agent number two or an agent number three can tap into learnings from agent number one. So the short-term memory is something that helps to share context during the crew execution so that you get better outcomes. 
Now let's talk about long-term memory. As the name suggests, long-term memory leaves even after the crew finishes. So that memory is stored in a database locally, and that allows your agents to learn from previous executions. So every time that your agent completes a task, it self-critiques itself to learn what it could have done better, or what are the things that should be in there that are not, and it stores that information so that it can tap back into that when it's running once again, and then use this knowledge to produce better and more reliable outcomes. The entity memory plays a role in here as well, as it's also short-lived, so it's only lived during the execution, it stores what are the subjects that are being discussed. So if your agent's trying to learn something about a specific company, it might store that company as an entity and its understanding of this company in the this database as well. So together, entity, short, and long-term memory plays a role on helping your agents to get more reliable outcomes. If your agents didn't have a memory, you would probably get a slightly different results every time that you run them. But because they do, you not only get more reliable ones, but you also get increasingly better ones because they learned from their mistakes.